In our last video segment, we found that for a beam, when released from rest, starting out in a horizontal position, has an angular acceleration initially equal to 3 halves times free fall acceleration divided by whatever the length of the beam happens to be. That means the tip of the beam has an initial tangential acceleration equal to 3 halves of g, whereas a point on the beam that sits at a distance of 2 thirds the length has an initial tangential acceleration just equal to g. And of course, the point of the beam adjacent to the axis has an initial acceleration equal to zero. So all points of the beam share a common angular acceleration, but every point of the beam has a different value of tangential acceleration. Okay, so then the question goes, what's the speed of this beam by the time it's reached a vertical position? So again, that implies that we're clear about what we mean by speed. If the question is, what's the angular speed when this thing reaches vertical, then all points have the same value of omega. However, the tip is going to have a much greater tangential velocity than a point halfway to the bottom. And of course, the point here adjacent to the axis has a tangential velocity of zero by the time the beam has gone vertical. So let's do two things. Let's figure out the common value of omega that all points of the beam have once it goes vertical, and let's figure out what the tangential velocity is for the tip of the beam. So you might think, well, this is easy. I have an angular acceleration, and I have an angular displacement of 90 degrees from horizontal to vertical, so couldn't I just use an equation that says final angular speed once it reaches the vertical position? is equal to the initial angular speed squared, which by the way was zero because it started from rest, plus two times angular acceleration times the angular displacement, and the angular displacement is either pi over two or 90 degrees depending on what units you want to work in, and the angular acceleration is, see that would be the mistake, wouldn't it? The angular acceleration is only initially equal to three halves g over l. But this angular acceleration varies. And I think I pointed out in the previous video, the reason that angular acceleration is varying isn't because the force varies, or even that the lever arm varies. The force of gravity always pulls at the center of mass, and it has a value of mg. And because we can think of that force as being applied at the center of mass, the lever arm is equal to L over 2, regardless of what position the beam is in. However, the angle between the lever arm and the force doesn't stay 90 degrees as it was in the beginning. And in fact, the angle goes to zero once the beam is reached vertical. And if torque is equal to the amount of force times the length of the lever arm, so if this is mg times L over 2 times sine of theta, theta is always changing. It starts out initially at 90 degrees, and maybe in this picture theta goes to, well, which way should I say it? Should I say the angle is 45 degrees, or should I say the angle is 135 degrees? Well, you can try this on your calculator. The sine of 45 and the sine of 135 give you the same value. So when it comes to calculating torque using the formula force times lever arm times sine of the angle, as long as you make a line that represents the line of lever arm and you identify the force and you put that along a line of force, so if this is the lever arm line and this is the force line, then you can say the angle between those two lines is the obtuse angle, the one greater than 90, or you can define the theta 
in this equation as the acute angle, the one less than 90, and either way, you'll get the same result. So anyway, my point being, because the angle theta varies, the torque varies. And if torque varies, alpha varies. And if alpha varies, you can't use a kinematics equation. But we're not stuck. That's why we have the law of conservation of energy to guide us. Whether or not acceleration is uniform, energy is always conserved. So when a beam starts out in a horizontal position and ends up falling to a vertical position, then it's lost gravitational potential energy. Now, by the way, the gravitational potential energy is calculated based on how the center of mass has displaced. So if the whole beam has a length of L, then the tip of the beam has displaced a distance equal to L, but we're actually concerned with how far the center of mass has displaced. So the center of mass has displaced a distance of L over 2. So the energy of this beam when it's in point A is gravitational potential energy. And by the time it gets to point B, well, this whole system has not translated through space this is just a system of an object that's rotating about a fixed axis. So the gravitational potential energy when the beam is in position A has been converted into rotational kinetic energy when it's in position B. So MGH is equal to one-half I omega squared, or mg times L over 2 equals one-half times one-third ml squared. Isn't that right? That's the rotational inertia of a rod when it's rotated about its end times omega squared. So we can cancel that 2. We can cancel one of the L's, we can cancel out the M, so we have 3G, let's see, 3G is equal to, we still have this L times omega squared. Okay, I guess that means omega is equal to the square root of 3G over L. So which point of the beam has that speed when it's gone vertical? Remember, all points of the beam have a common value of omega, but they all have a different value of tangential. The points farthest from the axis of rotation have the most speed, and the points closest to the axis have zero speed. So if I want to find the speed just of the tip of this beam, then I can use the equation just as s equals theta r, V equals omega r, and A equals alpha r, right? If V equals omega times r, then V is equal to the square root of 3G over L times, well, what's the value of r for the tip? The value of r for the tip is the full length of the beam, so rad... 3g over L is omega, L is the value of R, and I can think of L as the square root of L squared. So when I put this all together, V is equal to the square root of 3gL, and that's the V of the tip.